Martin Wismeyer, do share with me your title at General Bytes and wonderful T-shirt, by the way. Thank you, thank you. It's, uh, it's in Dash Blue. <laughs> Actually, it's also Dan General Bytes Blue. I'm the marketing manager for General Bytes. I joined them uh, uh, some time ago and then I was their first client in 2014. So, uh, um, yes, it's really exciting. Uh, we didn't do much about promotion and stuff at the time because uh, General Bytes was primarily focused on creating the product and they didn't have any time to actually market it and brand it. So it's really nice to, uh, to be able to do the marketing for a product I think is really nice because it's, uh, it makes virtual currencies less virtual. And so, you know, let's bring Dash to the streets and we can do it with the General Bytes machine. So this is my uh, objective at marketing. So you bought their first machine, you were their first customer? Correct, correct. I had the very, very first serial numbers. And I remember when I opened the box, there was a note saying, you are my first client, everything will not work as expected, but be patient, we'll make it work. But mind you, that was 2014. But it worked better than anything I had at the time. So I was excited and... Uh, and only kept new adding new features. So it's, uh, uh, let me see this, this one. Yeah, the one behind me without the fingerprint uh, reader is actually one of the models they no longer make, but you know, the, the, they're still updating it with every two weeks with support, new features and everything. So uh, uh, yes, it's exciting. And I was excited to, to join uh, General Bytes because uh, you know, I hope to be able to expand more of the, the services we offer and right now, our ATMs are going, are selling like hotcakes. So uh, oh, really? it's exciting time. Yes, very much. Uh, well, we, that, 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 sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I think it's it's exciting times. And then also because, uh, well, we added the Dash support recently, which we're very excited about. Uh, it brings back the fungibility, basically, the, that was not there with Bitcoin. And we find that Dash, the blocks are... Uh, not full like unlike Bitcoin, so it's really nice and fast to do transactions. Uh, as such, we thought it was a natural fit for our range of ATMs. So yes, it's backported. So all the Dash support, every ATM ever made will be able to to just add this to their portfolio. They just have to press one update for the firmware. Five minutes later, they're compatible. So that is we easy. Love that. That is yeah, easy. well, that's 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 the idea. <laughs> yeah. So I want to talk more about this hotcakes, selling like hotcakes. Uh, but before I do, I want to get a little bit of background on General Bytes. I first heard of General Bytes, I would say, about two years ago. I was up in New Hampshire, and a friend of mine said, "Hey, uh, would you like to come to my house party? And by the way, we'll be testing out my new." A Bitcoin selling ATM at my house and he had bought one of your machines which he later installed in a restaurant and so that was my first experience using it and and so if I'm also not mistaken uh, I think that General Bytes comes in at like maybe a lower price point than maybe even most of its competitors but yeah. I don't want to get into too much speculation will you please yeah. tell me uh, kind of just like what you guys are about and how, in fact, the price point does compare with your competitors. Uh, the, um, we started, um, or actually Carol, our CEO, started with General Bytes in 2013 after a failed Indiegogo campaign. What he did is he created a, uh, a custom Android with a, a vandal-proof touchscreen and um, launched it via Indiegogo as a development board. Unfortunately, nobody supported. Actually, it was really miserable. It failed miserably. So, <laughs> while, while, while with a huge stock of development boards, what were we going to do? So he was, he found out about uh, Bitcoin ATMs, and at the time it was only Lamassu, and and he just thought, uh, you know, with by making his own hardware, he could probably do it at a more competitive price because I believe there were like six thousand dollars or something for an ATM, one-way ATM. So uh, he said, well, I can do it for half the price. So that is why, where we used uh, um, the original development boards and to, to basically create our own custom hardware, Bit Bitcoin ATM at first. We didn't have any altcoins at the time. But uh, very soon, I believe in 2000, early 2014, yes, we added the first altcoins, Litecoin, Doge, Doge, Doge. Sorry, Dogecoin. That's how. Um, that's what we all do, right? How do you say it again? <laughs> yeah, yeah. and the, uh, so, so so we gradually, you know, grew into that and became more of like a block blockchain agnostic. We 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 build it so that anyone can add 
their coins via our GitHub repo. We are not there to judge uh, what's a good coin, what's not a good coin. But for ourselves, we always do look for coins that, that have an advantage over Bitcoin, like, like for example, Dash. Uh, and in a way, also Monero has this anonymity. They bring back the anonymity to uh, these cryptocurrencies. And we think that's very important. It's, it's, you know, it, it's, it's important for us. So this is why we really, really like supporting uh, Dash on our ATM. So fortunately, I didn't have any one of the blue ones here. But I sent you a picture of the blue yes. ATM. Okay. Yes, I'll show that right now. Tell me, a, so someone ordered a whole series of Dash branded specific ATMs from you? Correct. Somebody ordered five. We can uh, do customization for the colors. We normally don't do that because it totally m messes up our manufacturing process. I mean, you know, we have to get different paints and, and, and decals and all. It's all quite complicated. And, and also, in the, you know, in production wise, it's difficult to fit it in. But if we have like an order for five, then we can do the customization. And somebody just, just called us and said, well, you know, we really want to have this Dash ATM. So we thought that was like super cool. And they turned out to be like, you know, the blue and the white. It's the perfect combination. It's really... Yes, yeah, very excited. So I'm not sure where they will end up. I, I don't. I, I'd have to look. I don't know where the location will be, but uh, we should definitely. Uh, yes, uh, you know, once they're launched, we should have a party. I think. Right. So Please. now you are based in both Prague, Czech Republic, and somewhere in Florida. Is that correct? Correct. We're uh, Bradenton, Florida, Prague, Czech Republic. I de generally do marketing uh, and I work from home in Amsterdam or one of the co-working spaces or I'm in Prague or, you know, wherever it takes, works takes me. Got so it. I tend to be the one that hops back and forth. And so now let's uh, talk, let's talk more about your machines. So you offer, do you offer machines that just go one way, um, fiat to crypto, and then do you offer machines that go both ways? Correct. Uh, right now, what we enabled on the uh, on the uh, BATM platform is vending of Dash coins. So people will be able to purchase Dash coins in return for some cash. Uh, what we will expand on is uh, to enable two-way operations so that on our BATM3, this is BATM2 platform, but our BATM3 platform is a two-way uh, two platform that all those machines will also be enabled with buyback. So they will be able to per buy back the uh, dash and give the end user a um, you know cash in, re in return uh -huh. but this is uh, f a little bit more complex uh, we were you know first implemented vending and then we see, you know we'll see what the market does how is mm -hmm. you know the market response mm -hmm. and then we can implement more more mm -hmm. wallets and more um, more more exchanges and also buyback features later so point of sale is also something we should still work on so there's all these pieces of the puzzle and once they're like there then we have a full ecosystem. So this is why we're really excited about, you know. And then will you tell me a bit about your price points, I guess in US dollars, if you would, for both the one-way machine and the two-way machine? Yes, we really tried a one-way machine. Uh, we, we try to you know, keep the pr prices as sharp as possible. Uh, we think it's fair to our customers. We, you know, we, we, the, we have a, a manufacturer in the Czech Republic, which is uh, less costly than say Germany, yet we have do get the same type of quality build, so we're really happy about that. We do our R and D in Prague, so that's uh, uh, I think price wise, I'm not sure about the competition, but uh, I think 2,849 is the current price for the BATM2. We'll have to up that a little bit to 2,999 because we added a new computer, which is faster, which allows us to process transactions faster and all. Mm -hmm. But these computers were a little more, more expensive. So we'll probably have to uh, uh, increase the price a little bit. But even then, I think we offer the best bug for, 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 for the money, uh, sorry, the best ATM for the money at, at, at this moment. Uh -huh. uh, so the, between 2,800 and 2,900 for the one way. And what was the price correct. point on the two way? Uh, our BATM platform is like it's a huge machine, so it's definitely a different type of machine. Uh, they start at uh, uh, roughly six six thousand nine hundred. I'd, I'd have to look that up, uh, but depending on the model, we've got five different models in the BATM three series. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is the XXL, which has a safe code lock and all that. That really is on a high end, and it's at ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars. But as I said, there is a huge difference in 
uh, between six and ten thousand dollars. The reason is is it's it's a different machine. It's different, much more steel, much more electronics inside for the two-way operation. Some models have a recycler that will uh, be able to take your cash, but also dispense that same cash later to the next user. Uh, while others will come with a high-capacity bill stacker, which will be able to give out cash as fast as possible. This is good for high volume locations. So we found that, find that no two Bitcoin ATM operators are the same. So by having multiple options in our ATM range, we'll be able to please as many operators as possible. Mm -hmm. Well, Excellent. let's talk more about your operators. Do you notice that there are any hot spots really anywhere in the world? Or oh, yes. are they just spread pretty much everywhere with no... No, it's, it's, uh, we opened offices in the US because I think 90% of our new clients are there. Uh, we see many, many uh, ATMs being launched in the UK. UK is very popular. Switzerland is very popular. Austria popular. Uh, there are definitely sort of like dead spots like Germany and there's not much in France either. And so there, there is, I, uh, it's, it's funny because I, I always look at the map and where the clients are on a, on a global map where our ATMs are. Uh, and then some people look and say, oh, they're everywhere. They're even in Kazakhstan. And say, yes, but I see it differently. We're noticeably absent in those markets, certain markets. So, you know, some people see, you know, oh, look at all where they are. I'm, I'm more focused on where they're not, you know. So <laughs> sure. uh, I, oh. it, will t it will take a few years, but then I think we'll, we'll have, you know, every corner of the world there will be uh -huh. Bitcoin ATMs and cryptocurrency ATMs. I think for uh, retail, uh, you know, day-to-day -day transactions, uh, Dash is ideal. It can be used, uh, it's gr great for small purchases like a coffee or, 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 or something else. It's, it's just uh, great also for gaming. It probably has a, a nice future. And I think uh, by, by offering more coins, you know, operators can decide for themselves which coins they want to, to, to launch. And it's just, you know, we like the, they ask us, we just make it for them. And mm -hmm. it's very excited. Yeah. Well, and this gets me thinking because a lot of times when I look at discussion online about crypto ETMs, a question that's always there is people are saying, you know, what are the legalities of this country or what are the legalities of that country? So is, is that something like, for example, I guess, I guess, is your machine able to be compliant with the legalities of any country and then after it's been shipped, it's up to the operator to then look into their own jurisdiction? Is that kind of how it works? It's uh, yes. You, you you have a very important point here. Um, the, it, you know, no two countries are the same. Regulation is different in 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 in. Well, if you look at the details in every country. So uh, uh, what we do is we have a, a AML KYC features built in uh, that you know can either be enabled by the operator or disabled if it's not required. Uh, you can use fingerprints. A phone verification, the machines can check no fly list if that's required, but we always urge operators don't over-regulate, uh, you don't want to keep this information, uh, so we, we, you know, just com to, com but to comply with every local law, uh, yes, we, we, we can comply with, with any law basically, if the law says no unauthorized, no un anonymous purchases, then we could, you know, any operator will be able to set them so that there's no anonymous purchases and only after an ID check, the phone number check, maybe a check whether uh, it's a burner phone or, you know, just checks like that can be built in. But as I said, uh, here in the Netherlands, for example, you don't require an ID up to 2,000 euros. So either you limit your machine to 2,000 euros for anonymous usage and say, that's it, we don't take any IDs, or you say, you know, we do take IDs if people want to exchange more mm -hmm. and then comply with local laws because then, you know, it will give you extra business basically. And if mm -hmm. people don't want to comply by uh, giving their ID or a fingerprint to authenticate on the device, then they can just stick below the limit or, you know, go to a different ATM. And there's all, there will always be, as long as there are enough ATMs, there will never be a real problem really. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's important. I think uh, uh, many ATMs don't have 
don't even think about uh, proper uh, you know identification uh, the problem with it I, I personally I dislike any any regulation like that as well uh, but it's not what my opinion is it is the country the laws of the country where the machine operates and because cryptocurrencies are, are hard to like grab uh, ATMs are very physical and, and very you know there much there so as a from a regulatory viewpoint they will probably be the first ones that will get you know problems if they wouldn't comply so for that reason yes we build it in uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's con we're constantly updating it we bring out every two weeks we bring out new updates new features we keep adding them it's uh, you know i think i think this frequent updates also makes and the continuous innovation also makes it worthwhile investments or such it's not it's not you know we're pushing boxes we keep supporting our operators well that so. leads me to I, my last question which i think uh probably a lot of people would be interested in when you mentioned investment is there um is there like an average time of return on investment for like a high trafficked area versus like a medium trafficked area like are do you have any stats on those it's difficult. Our software is, is distributed, so that means that every operator runs their own software. So uh, the exact numbers we don't have. We know it's uh, uh, the the we we know that uh, you know operators after about six months tend to buy the second machine. So that's the only real hard number I have. So between six, eight, nine months, that's when we see the second orders order coming in. So. Uh, I think it's that's also the time in which they made enough money to justify purchasing a second machine. But we don't have exact details on that. We do see that some uh, a widespread in the fees that operators ask. Some operators are like happy with a three percent fee. Others ask a hefty fifteen percent commission on the purchases. So you see, there is a lot of variation there. The um, Bitcoin uh, for Bitcoin, uh, there is a website called coinatmradar.com uh, they list uh, the, the actually live updated average rates for buy and sell for all the bitcoin atms and even though that's bitcoin i think for uh, dash that would probably be in the similar range uh, people complain about rates at bitcoin atms usually but you know the thing is normally an atm is run by a bank and it's you the bank account holder who's paying fees for using those atms but those uh, with Bitcoin ATMs, it's there's no bank. You're your own bank, so you know there's no dash right. bank. So, so that's why uh, uh, why it's more directly in a, you know portal to the exchange. So there's always fees. Yeah. There's probably right. cash handling, security, and right. so this is for this reason. The yeah. Well, and that and that's my final question. Uh, you mentioned exchange. So do you find that most operators choose to auto feed their machines balance through an exchange? Um, or are some of them selling, you know, just like their own Dash or how does that work? Uh, currently, it's, uh, the Dash implementation supports connection to the Dash daemon. So you would have a Dash D uh, daemon running somewhere with your Dash itself from there. Uh, what we're looking at is, uh, is adding exchanges. So yes, uh, it would be preferred because we see with most Bitcoin operate, most ATM operators that sell Bitcoin, they, you, they feed it from an exchange. And uh, that's definitely preferred. It would take the volatility risk out of uh, running the coin in your ATM network. But it's, it's, as I said, it's difficult. It requires some implementation. And, uh, and that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's on the to-do list, definitely. All right. Well, thanks so much for your time, Martin. Uh, you, you are sure a, a jolly sort of chap. I just I <laughs> want to share with everyone, when I first emailed General Bytes and requested an interview, the email that I got back was a giant gif of Katy Perry saying, oh my God, oh my God. And, yeah, uh, and it was uh, Martin uh, saying funny. saying that he would come on the ah, show. it's Amanda. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah All right, well, so nice. <laughs> Martin and his team's products can be found at generalbytes.com. And thanks so much for talking to me today.